TV Lunchtime News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good afternoon. A teenager who murdered two sisters in a London park has been sentenced to life in prison. 19-year-old Daniel Hussein will now serve a minimum of 35 years behind bars for killing Bieber Henry and Nicole Smallman in Wembley last June. The sisters had been celebrating Bieber's birthday when they were stabbed by Hussein, who later claimed he had made a pact with the devil. And speaking outside court, Bieber and Nicole's mother said justice had been done for her beautiful girls. Helen Keening has the latest. Our correspondent Rebecca Vary was in court this morning and has been following the case. So Rebecca, what was the atmosphere like in there this morning? The man who organised the flight that killed footballer Emiliano Sala and his pilot has been found guilty of endangering the safety of the aircraft. Businessman De The government says it is urgently investigating reports a British boat was detained in France as the fractious row over fishing rights continues. French authorities have threatened to retaliate after a number of fishing licences were turned down. The threats the Environment Secretary has suggested could even be seen to breach international law. Carrie Davies has the latest. The Chancellor unveiled a big and bold budget yesterday, committing to a mammoth £150 billion worth of spending. But it's where that money is going which has generated criticism. As the cost of living continues to rise, there are concerns middle-income families could be hit the hardest. Here's our political correspondent, Libby Vina. Still to come. The first, a new trial to catch breast cancer earlier is underway with an appeal for 10,000 volunteers to come forward. At the moment, only women over 50 are invited for a mammogram every three years. That is despite the cancer being one of the most common and most treatable if caught early. Well, let's hope this new study could change the whole screening process and save many more lives. Well, let's get more from our health editor now, Emily Morgan. So, Emily, this sounds interesting. Could be a real game changer. Yeah, it could, in that it has the potential to increase survival rates. have to give a saliva sample. They'll be filling in a questionnaire about their family history and their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They're like every year for a screening, those at low risk perhaps every five years. Now, the aim is to give all this information in questionnaires. Now, we spoke to one of the participants. Now, if this is successful, then the and back for screenings mm -hmm. every three years, like they do. Ministers are expected to meet today to discuss removing or adding more countries from the COVID travel red list. Seven la Next is lunchtime. This year's Poppy Appeal has been launched with the help of Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall. Charles and Cam And finally, you may remember when the public voted to name the UK's newest Arctic ship, Boaty McBoatface. Well, that decision was, of course, overruled by ministers and the ship was given the perhaps more sensible and more fitting title, the RS Sir David Attenborough. Well, today was the vessel's official launch and the ship's namesake was also on board. Ahead of next week's COP26 summit in Glasgow, Sir David urged us all to do our bit to address the climate crisis. Martin Stew is more. Oh, bon voyage indeed. And that is it this lunchtime. Mary will be here with the evening news at 6.30. The news where you are follows the weather. But from all of us here, bye-bye. Hello again. Now the main stories in London. And the Duchess of Cornwall has spoken publicly of her sympathy for the families of Sabina Nessa, Sarah Everard and other victims of violence. The husband of Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe has met with the Foreign Secretary today to discuss her case. Now, Transport for London has said that the Waterloo and City Line will be running a full weekday service from the 22nd of November. The line an environmental production group has unveiled a five metre long sculpture in Grosvenor Square today to raise awareness of climate issues. And finally, Sir David Amos's dog has been recognised as Westminster Dog of the Year in tribute to the late MP. Here's three... All right, weather now. Here's Holly. And that is all from us for now. Duncan is back here at six. Until then, enjoy your afternoon. Bye-bye.